The Behavior of Organisms, an Experimental Analysis by B.F. Skinner, published in 1938, represents a seminal work in the field of psychology and the foundational text for the school of thought known as behaviorism. Skinner's work is primarily concerned with observable behavior as opposed to internal psychological events, which he considered inaccessible to objective study. This book is the result of Skinner's extensive experimental research and exploration of the principles governing learned behavior in both animals and humans. In this work, Skinner introduces the basic concepts and principles of operant conditioning, a form of psychological learning where an individual's behavior is modified by its consequences, specifically the presence or absence of reinforcement or punishment following the behavior. Skinner contrasts operant conditioning with classical conditioning developed by Ivan Pavlov, which involves learning through association and focuses on involuntary physiological responses rather than deliberate action. One of the book's core concepts is the operant, which refers to any behavior that operates on the environment to produce consequences. Operant behaviors can be modified by their effects, which increase or decrease the likelihood that these behaviors will occur in the future. This is dependent upon the reinforcement schedules provided, which can either be positive, adding a stimulus after a behavior, or negative, removing an adverse stimulus following a behavior. Punishment, in contrast, presents an outcome that decreases the likelihood of a behavior recurring. Skinner also explores the discriminative stimulus, which is a cue that indicates the potential for reinforcement to follow a behavior. Discriminative stimuli enable subjects to distinguish situations in which specific behaviors will be reinforced, essentially guiding when and where certain actions are more likely to occur. He discusses different reinforcement schedules, including continuous reinforcement, every occurrence of the operant behavior is reinforced, and partial reinforcement, only some instances of the operant behavior are reinforced. These schedules have significant effects on the rate and pattern of learning and response, with partial reinforcement leading to behaviors that are more resistant to extinction, the process where behaviors cease when reinforcement stops. Within partial reinforcement, Skinner further distinguishes between fixed and variable intervals and ratios that influence behavior in different ways. Skinner's experiments, primarily conducted with pigeons and rats, demonstrated the wide applicability of his principles across species. He outlines the construction and use of the operant conditioning chamber, commonly called a Skinner box, where an animal could make one or two responses that would be recorded while the behavior was shaped and maintained by carefully controlled consequences. In addition to these experimental methodologies, Skinner also pioneered a graphical method of data analysis that emphasized the rate of responding as the most important measure of behavior. This method allowed clear and objective tracking of changes in behavioral patterns over time. Throughout the book, Skinner insists on the importance of an empirical approach to the study of behavior. He eschews speculative interpretations of behavior and mentalistic explanations that could not be objectively measured or verified. He firmly believed that behaviorism could advance the understanding of human and animal behavior as well as contribute to the betterment of society through applications in areas such as education, psychotherapy, and the legal system. The behavior of organisms is divided into two major parts. The first part introduces the basic principles and concepts, while the second part provides detailed accounts of the experiments conducted by Skinner. These experiments vividly illustrate the new principles of behavior modification that he observed. Skinner details various experimental scenarios, including how animals adapt their behavior when presented with different reinforcement contingencies. For instance, he describes how an animal can learn to press a liver, an operant response, to obtain food, reinforcement, when hungry, a motivating operation, and that the exact pattern of lever pressing can be shaped and maintained by manipulating the schedule of reinforcement. In depth, Skinner evaluates the impact of the delay of reinforcement on learning, the establishment of discriminative control, signals that particular behavior will be reinforced, differentiation, learning to engage in a specific behavior under certain conditions but not others, and extinction. The application of reinforcement and punishment procedures 
as well as the creation of complex sequences of behavior known as behavior chains, where each individual action serves as both reinforcement for the previous response and a cue for the next, are also examined. Crucially, Skinner also addresses the concept of stimulus generalization, where a behavior that has been reinforced in the presence of a specific stimulus may also occur in the presence of similar stimuli. Conversely, discrimination involves responding only to the specific stimuli that have been associated with reinforcement. Skinner's meticulous work established a foundation for behaviorism that emphasized scientific rigor in psychological research. He believed that the principles gleaned from his experiments could be applied to solve human problems. Indeed, the impact of his work can be seen in various areas, including therapy for behavioral disorders, teaching methods and instructional design, animal training, and understanding and influencing consumer behavior, among others. Skinner's discussion of reinforcement is buttressed with comprehensive data, graphs, and analysis illustrating the principles of his theory. The rigorous scientific approach is clear throughout the book, as he meticulously charts the progress of his research and the conclusions derived from it. One of the most powerful implications of the behavior of organisms is that it suggests behavior can be predicted and controlled. Skinner posits that by understanding the principles of operant conditioning, individuals and institutions can exert powerful influence over the behavior of animals, including humans, in both beneficial and potentially manipulative or harmful ways. The approach laid out by Skinner in the behavior of organisms would go on to influence not only psychology, but also education, industry, and even animal training. Behaviorism, as a school of thought, would become the dominant view in American psychology for several decades, partly due to the impact of this work. Yet, Skinner's emphasis on environmental factors as the main determinant of behavior stirred considerable debate. Critics argue that cognition, emotions, and biological factors must also be integrated into a comprehensive understanding of behavior. Over time, the behaviorist approach has been regarded as too restrictive by some, and the book is seen as representing a historical phase in psychology rather than a definitive model of human behavior. In conclusion, The Behavior of Organisms is a work that establishes the scientific study of behavior on objective, empirical grounds. Skinner's innovative approach and his development of principles that explain the complexity of behavior through simple yet exhaustive experimentation mark this book as a milestone in the field of behavioral psychology. His work continues to be widely discussed, taught, applied, and critiqued in the continuing evolution of psychology, behavior analysis, and other related fields.